Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Maker and today I'm teaching you how to set up and connect with your Cricut Explore Air 2 cutting machine. This is the Cricut Kickoff Lesson 1 and together we're going to set up our Cricut Explore machines together step by step. So please pull up a chair in my studio here and let's get started. Now the Cricut Explore Air 2 is a computer guided cutting machine that can cut over 100 different materials, everything from vinyl to paper to, yes, fabric and thin wood. My very first machine was a Cricut Explore Air 2, and we still use it to this day. It is now almost six years old. <laughs> there are five models currently. The um, Sorry, there's four models of the Explore. The Explore Air 1, which has a... Uh, one clamp. The Explore Air 2 has two clamps and it can use Bluetooth as well as the USB cable. The Explore Air 2 uses Bluetooth and can cut and write up to twice as fast. And then there's the Explore 3 which can do everything that the others can't do. Um, uh, sorry, everything that the others can do but including using smart materials. But today I want to show you how to set up a Cricut Explore Air 2. And I'll show you how to set up the Explore 3 later today. The Cricut Explorer Air 2 is a popular machine. Many people have this. It's a real workhorse. You can do so much with the Cricut Explorer Air 2. If you just got one, congratulations. Here I have a brand new and still sealed in the box Cricut Explorer Air 2 cutting machine. I'm going to open the box, see what's inside. We're going to connect it to a variety of devices, including Mac, Windows, iPad, iPhone, and Android. So basically everything. And then do the first cut. My goal is to get you set up and able to cut by the end of this video. It is really easy and you totally got this. I will help you. Uh, now I do have something special for you, a totally free and printable handbook that goes along with these free lessons. You can download it right now at cricutkickoff.com. Just register for the class. Again, it's free and you'll get the handbook. I'll be referring to it as we go along during today's lesson. Um, and this is recently updated too. It's got some really awesome stuff in it. And one more thing, I want you to be sure everyone knows you are not alone. I am here to help. It's my amazing team and fantastic community of more than half a million Cricut crafters. Hang out with me in my studio. Take notes in your handbook as we go along. And if you get stuck, reach out and ask for help. I love to help, as does every member of my team and community. We are always here to help you succeed, and I truly, truly mean that. I love helping, and nothing makes me happier than knowing I made a difference. Really. <laughs> so, are you unready to unbox this beauty? Let's get down to it and get it done. I'm going to just get right into it, and we're going to start. So, set this off to the side. It's a big box. I might need to adjust my cameras and stuff. So what I'll do, I think, is we'll put this right in front of me like this. There we go. And I have an overhead camera, so when we get to that part, I'll, I'll do that. Do we have any tape on here? Usually it's taped right here at the back. Now I recommend you keep your box, so don't just rip it open. But, you know, cut the tape off. You'll want to keep the box for storage or shipping or transport or anything like that. I have most of my boxes, much to Greg's chagrin. <laughs> Lots of boxes. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to the overhead so you can see what's in here. And I'm gonna back up my computer, my camera so we can see more of the box. There we go. So inside the box here, when you open it up, you see a, a machine mat, right? So let's take out the mat. And the Cricut itself is in these, like, whatever, these things to keep it safe. So we're just going to lift it up and set it down on the desk. Actually, let's pull out this while we're, we're, we're standing here. We'll go over what's in this as well. All right, so I'm going to lift this up, pull it out. And I want you to note that here in the bottom, there are some things. Don't forget these. This is our power cord. And, the, or, and this is the USB cable, right? So power cord and USB. And your pen. We'll be using this in uh, lesson three. 
All right. So again, here's a pen. I'll set this over here. And let's, before we get to the machine, let's unbag and unbox everything. So this is what the power cable looks like, right? This is the end that goes in your Cricut. This is the end that goes in your outlet. You can just remove this little plastic thing. Set this over here. This is your USB cable. The Cricut Explore Air does not need to have USB. I can use Bluetooth. Um, I will probably be using USB today just because it gets a little crazy when I'm, I'm setting up so many different Cricuts or, you know, we'll see. I might do a combination, but this is the USB cable right here. If for any reason your computer doesn't have USB and you want to use this, because by the way, the USB cable will be faster and more reliable, you can get a uh, Bluetooth uh, USB adapter for any laptop, you know, usually laptops are the ones that might not have them or we know some older desktop computers. These are like under $10. You can get them at Best Buy or on Amazon and you can use this if you need to use Bluetooth. Okay but you can do either USB or Bluetooth with the Cricut Explore Air 2. And then in the Let's Get Started packet, we have we have our Let's Get Started uh, little, little cheat sheets. <laughs> they like basically tell you what to do, right? So unleash this beauty. And it tells you to, um, to plug in and power on your fabulous new Cricut machine. And to get connected, uh, just go to cricut.com slash setup. So we'll be doing that together. And then, so it just leads you through on what to do. It's cute, right? <laughs> All right, so, and then if you have issues, there's a little welcome thing in here, what to do, uh, the, the where to find videos, how to email for support and get help. This is a little booklet that comes with it. It's not a manual per se. It's more like a, here's all the cool things that you can do. It's sort of an inspirational sort of thing. It's called the welcome book. I recommend you keep this, read it. It'll help you get a better idea of the awesome machine that you have now and um, your warranty. Now these things right here, these are your test materials and we'll be using these today and in lesson three. So a piece of blue cardstock, a piece of piece of black cardstock and this should be just a piece of white cardstock okay and then of course you had your pen don't forget that that's also basically part of the test and then a blue light grip machine mat and if you don't know what a machine mat is you're going to see but we're also going to talk all about the different tools and supplies in lesson two so we'll go into details on why it's called a light grip machine mat and you know because there's different kinds and all that good stuff but today we're going to just focus on setting things up all right let's set these things to the side so here is our Cricut let's take off its packing materials here little sticker that says keep looking new reuse this bag Good to have if you're going to put it into storage or ship it right all right and then inside is the Cricut this is a mint Cricut Explore Air 2 my very first Cricut Air was my Cricut Explore Air 2 was a, a rose pink one it's like right over here we use it all the time it's awesome I love that thing There's many different colors of the Cricut Explorer. Many, I don't, I don't even know how many, uh, but so many. All right, so there's a lot of like packing material, like or like tape on this, just to keep everything. I don't know, in place and clean. Maybe also, I think this is the open button, so it's an open like during shipping. So take all of that off, okay? And there's also a sticker right here. So you want to take that off too. Sometimes easier said than done. We'll peel off that sticker. There we go. And uh, if you want to open it to look inside, because chances are there's some shipping things inside too. This is the open button right here. 
So I'm going to open that up. And sure enough, we have some styrofoam in there. I love how it opens. So it's right here. See this? You want to pull this out. This just keeps the blades, the clamps. These are the clamps right here. It keeps them from, you know, I don't know, doing things they're not supposed to. <laughs> uh, so this is the Cricut Explore Air 2 all opened up. This is a little storage cup. This is a little cartridge adapter. We don't use cartridges anymore. The Cricut Explorer Air 2 has been out for seven, six and a half years, not quite a while. So um, this is a precursor from the old days. So chances that you might have some cartridges, but you probably don't. This is the open button for the lid. This is the, uh, the assembly, the blade assembly. It moves back and forth along this rod to do your cutting, which you'll see. These are the clamps that we put tools and blades in. This is clamp A and this is clamp B. They're the sensor for print then cut is right under here. This is the power button. This is the smart dial. You, uh, during the tutorial, it'll tell you to put it onto cardstock, but as soon as the set first cut is done, uh, you're gonna wanna switch that to custom, okay? You wanna keep it on custom. And then this is the load button. This is the go button. And this is the pause button. And one other thing that a lot of people don't know about is the storage tray right here in the front. It lifts up for you to keep blades and housings in. This is magnetic right here. So you can keep them right in here and they won't like run out, you know, fall over the place. And this is great for tools right here or other things. People put other things in there. All right, so, and then on the back of the machine, to close it, you just, Close, you know, like this. On the back of the machine, we have the, this right here is the USB cable port. And this here is the power connection port. So let's actually move all of this over to the other camera because we're gonna, you're gonna wanna see it actually in action, not on its side. So let's put this right over here. And let's see how it looks on the camera. It's okay, but I think that we need some more, a, bit, a wider view. Here we go. And I'll move this over like this. There we go. Okay, so there is our Cricut Explore Air 2. So we're now ready to dive into it. We've got it unboxed and everything. So it's now time to connect to our Cricut Explore Air 2. To do this, first you need an internet connection. Cricut needs a broadband connection of at least two to three megabits per second, which really isn't that fast. My connection here at the studio is 100 megabits per second. Most people will have this without a problem. Usually you can also use your phone, your cell service. It just needs to be fast enough, two to three megabits per second. You'll also need a device to connect your Cricut to because the Cricut does not operate independently. So that could be a Windows computer running Windows 10 or later, a Mac computer running OS 11 or later, an iPhone or an iPad running iOS 14.5 or later, and an Android tablet or phone <laughs> running version 9 or later, like this Samsung tablet. You can always check the latest system requirements at jennifermaker.com slash cricket dash requirements. Now I want to show you how to connect to each one of these devices in turn. We're going to start with a Mac computer because that's what I'm recording this lesson on right now. And then we'll do a Windows and then an iPad, which is the same as an iPhone for our purposes, and then an Android tablet. So to begin, we refer back to the materials included with our Cricut Explore Air 2. So that is our welcome packet. This little thing right here. So again, um, we already opened it up. We unleashed its beauty. <laughs> so we're on step two, get connected. So step two says, just go to cricut.com slash setup and we'll walk you through every step. So we're gonna do that together. So I'm gonna head on over to my web browser I'm using Google Chrome, but you can use whatever you have so long as it's, you know, a modern web browser. I recommend Google Chrome, though. Um, and we need to go to cricut.com slash setup. So right up here, cricut.com slash setup. <clears throat> Glad you're here. 
select a product type to set up. So we're going to click on cutting machine and we are using a Cricut Explore. Now, I realize that this looks like the new Explore, but it's okay. It's an Explore. This is the one we want. So click on Cricut Explore. Almost there. Now we need to download Cricut Design Space. So to do that, we need to actually click on the I agree to Cricut Terms of Use and Privacy Policy in order to get this box to highlight and become um, accessible. So we click on this. You can, of course, read them, which I recommend you read by clicking on these links here. You will be asked to do this several times during the setup process. Don't be surprised. So once that's checked, you can click download now and it will download. Now it says to go to your downloads folder, but if you're on Google Chrome, the easiest way to, is to get it is actually to click on this little arrow you see right here in the lower left corner and then click on open and it'll just open for you. But if you can't find it, go to your downloads folder and it'll be in there. So I'm going to click on open and you get a screen that looks like this one. Move that up here. Um, so this is the application. So on a Mac, we do a lot of dragging and dropping. <laughs> so we're going to click, hold and drag this over on top of the applications folder and let go. And it adds it to the applications folder when we do that. So then we can just double click on this and it opens our applications folder for us. And then we see Cricut Design Space right there. So we can just double click that to open it. If you get a prompt like this that says, hey, it's found it from the internet, are you sure? <laughs> it's fine. If you get something that says it can't open it at all, sometimes that will happen if you have your security settings really high. Um, that's okay too. Just go into your system preferences. It looks like this icon right down here, this gray one with the gear icon and go into your security settings and you can give it permission to install it if that happens. But usually we see this one. So you go ahead and click open and it'll, in it'll install for you. And it looks like this. So if for any reason you've already uh, installed Cricut Design Space on your computer, it'll actually probably just sign you right in, right? Uh, but if you're new, which is what I think most of you will be, you will see this screen. And at the bottom, you have two options, product setup and sign in. Uh, so even if you already have an account, right, I recommend that you do product setup. And by the way, if you do, if you did have an older Cricut or it's been a while since you did this and you're doing it all again as a refresher, definitely re-download that software. Don't assume that whatever you downloaded a month ago is still the most current version. In fact, if your software is really quite old, um, it'll like it'll try to open, but it'll get confused. You always want to download a fresh copy of Cricut Design Space if you've been away for more than a couple months. It's just, and it won't hurt anything to do that. There's no issues. I download Cricut Design Space all the time. <laughs> all right, so we want to go ahead and click on product setup here at the bottom. This is how we uh, get a new machine all set up. And I'm going to switch over to Design Space so we're only seeing that screen. There we go. All right, so on Cricut Design Space, you if you're new, and this is a new installation, it'll ask you to create a Cricut ID, which is free. Um, Cricut Design Space is free to use. You do not have to have a subscription to Cricut Access to use your Cricut. Um, if you already have a Cricut account, you're going to want to click on Sign In and Sign In with the, your email address and your password. If you don't remember it, use the forgot password prompt to find it. You want to use the same Cricut account if you have another Cricut or you know you already have an account so that you can access all of your past projects and share projects you know, between other Cricuts or whatever you, know, you want to do. You want to have one account typically. But we're going to do it as if we're brand new for all of you who are new to Cricut. So you begin by typing in your email address. I'll just put in an email address. Let's do I'm doing the explore too. This is not a real email address. Don't try to email me here. This is just for Cricut kickoff. When you put in your email address, double check that you spelled everything right. This is really important. Always double and triple check your email addresses whenever you're signing up for something because it just saves so much headache. <laughs> All right, and then your password needs to be at least eight characters long 
and have a mix of upper and lower case letters, numbers, and a special character. So let me put in mine. All right, I've got my password in, and then you need your first name. Be sure you, you spell all of this correctly too, so that you're addressed by the proper name and can be looked up and all that good stuff. Select your country if you're not in the United States. And then down at the bottom here, uh, you can un unopt in to Cricut's email, but I recommend you stay opt in. They send lots of awesome deals and stuff, so, and news and all that. So it's, it's a good idea. I subscribe to everything and I stay subscribed to everything too. <laughs> And then here where it says, uh, I agree to Cricut's terms of use and privacy policy. I know we've already done that, but we're going to do it again. You won't be able to create your Cricut ID. It'll be grayed out until you click that checkbox. And then it turns to green and you can click it. And you will be asked many times to do this. I'm sure they're just being extra careful. They want to be sure that you've read them. And also people approach uh, the software from different avenues. So not everyone will have agreed that first time, right? They'll have come in, they'll just have downloaded it or whatever. So, all right, so we're gonna create a Cricut ID. And we just click that button, give it a second, and we will see the Let's Get Set Up screen. So where we select the product. So today we're setting up a smart cutting machine. So we click on that. And then these are the five current Cricut cutting machines that we have. And we are setting up the Cricut Explore Air 2, which is in the Cricut Explore family. We're not doing the Cricut Explore 3, right? So don't confuse these two. You want the Cricut Explore family. Mine happens to look like this one, but yours may not, right? If you have the Explore Air 1, the Explore Air 2, Explore Air 2, Air 2, right? Explore Air, whatever. That's the one. This is where you want to click right here. So we're going to click on that. All right. Time to prepare our workspace. We want at least 10 inches or 25 centimeters of space behind the Cricut Explore. So let me switch over to this view here. Um, so when you are using your Cricut, this is the side view. Let's open it up. Your material comes in this side here and it comes out the back. Um, I want you to see there's a slot right here. Your material comes out here. So it's very important that there be space behind here for your mat. If you put it right up against a wall, your mat will hit the wall and it'll, it'll air, right? So you need to have at least 10 inches. Or if you're going to use the big mat, which we'll talk about in lesson two, you need even more space. Uh, but 10 inches for today is good. So make sure you got 10 inches of space here. All right. Back in Cricut Design Space, we go to the next screen in our setup by clicking the arrow right here. And we need to find an outlet. Plug the Cricut Explore into a wall outlet and then power it on. All right, so let's flip this back around here. So back, right back here is where we do our power. So let's first plug in the power. There we go. It's always a little tricky use the camera. There we go. So it's all plugged in. It goes into that one right there. You want to keep your cord out of the way. You don't want to have your cord like this, right? Because your your material might, this, this is the slot that things pass through. So you want to have it over like this. And then I, I also am going to use our USB cable so that you can see how this works. So I'm going to, well, Actually, we should plug it in first. I'm getting ahead of myself. So you can plug it into a wall outlet. Yes, a power strip is also good. I'm just gonna use a uh, extension cord, which I have right here, right? Just a basic extension cord. And there it is. And we'll just plug that in. Make sure we got it. It's got a, you know, I forget where they cut polarized. So it's cut. And so you need to get it in the right area. There we go. All right, so it's plugged in. And remember, keep your cable away from the pass-through slot in the back. All right, and then the USB cable. You don't have to use this, but the USB cable is faster and more reliable. So I tend to use it when I can. Um, so I will also show you Bluetooth though. So, so I'm gonna show you USB first. So this, and this cable comes with your Cricut. So this is the end that goes into the back where it goes right here. I think it goes with the little USB symbol up. 
like it's hard to do <laughs> like that. Let me let me bend over his. There we go, right in there like that. And then to plug the other end in, I actually use a Cricut, a sorry, a USB extension cable. My computer is actually over here. It's uh, like four, like three feet from the end of my hand. It's like over here. And the while the cable will reach, it stretches like across my desk. I don't like that. So I buy a USB extension cable. I love to use them. You can get them too. This is, uh, they don't cost that much. This is a 12 foot one. So you can use USB even if it's like not super close. So the USB cable does work better because you don't have to rely on Bluetooth, which and this, this is especially a big deal if you are using like a mobile device, because if you take your mobile device out of the room while you're using your Cricut, it will lose the connection. So you, it's just, you it's, let me back up there a second. You can't use uh, USB if you have a mobile device. Um, so that's not going to work. What am I thinking? But you want USB when you're using it with your, like a laptop or something like that. Because if you were to remove it, like, because you're not thinking about it, right? But also it's got a better connection, right? It's just, it's not up to like whatever its connection might happen to be that day, right? It's just more reliable and a touch faster. So that's my little, my little plug for using USB. So I'll use it whenever I can. But again, you don't have to, you can use Bluetooth. Um, but so let's plug it into the extension. And again, this is like a 12 foot extension and it, it's really convenient, okay? So that is our extension. So let's flip it back around and we're gonna make sure all of our cables are out of the way. So I'll just let them drape off my table here. And there is our Cricut Explore Air 2. So nothing, there's plenty of space in the back here, no cables in the way, and that's important. All right, and it's plugged in. Okay, and then it says to power it on, right? Remember the power button is right over here. So if I did it correctly, we should see this light up when I press it. It'll make that sound. Okay, that sounds good. We've got a light on it. That all sounds totally normal. Okay, so back in Cricut Design Space, we're good, we have plugged it in and powered it on. So we press the button to go to the next screen. Um, I guess I got ahead of myself. It says use the included USB cable to connect Cricut Explore family to this computer. <laughs> so we already did that, you saw me do that. So that actually brings up a good point. So down here at the bottom, and I want you to see this, I have to scroll to see this part here. So be sure you scroll down too, just in case it's not showing for you because there's stuff at the bottom. Like, and you can't continue right now. So there's, there's things we need to do. So um, if you don't have a USB, right? So we're using the Mac. If for some reason you're using a Mac, it doesn't have USB or, you know, Windows, whatever your computer doesn't have it. I just want to point out that you can still use it. You can get something like this little USB smart Bluetooth dongle. It goes right into a USB port on a desktop or laptop and it'll make it Bluetooth compatible. These are under $10. I got this at Best Buy. So you can still use Bluetooth if you need to. And you can still do this setup with Bluetooth if for some reason you don't have this and you really want to get it set up right now. I think it's better to do with USB because I think it's more reliable, but you can still do this with Bluetooth. So just so that you know, you have options. You would just need to go into Bluetooth and set it up. Let me just show you that real quick. So here we are in Cricut Design Space. So let's say I wanted to use Bluetooth, not USB. So we would want to go into our Bluetooth settings. So on the Mac, you go to System Preferences right down here and Let's go back to the main screen. This is what you see when you go to the, the main one and then you wanna click on Bluetooth and um, make sure Bluetooth is turned on. And right here, you'll see Cricut Explorer or Cricut Air 2 is how it shows up. So you can connect to it right here, just like this. I'll go ahead and do it. 
if you are asked for a code, um, type in four zeros. I wasn't asked for a code that time, but sometimes you might be. Oh, it says not connected. Is it plugged in? Yes. All right, so if this happens, usually I just uh, click that little X button to like remove it and I say remove. And then I'll even turn my Bluetooth off and back on again. And then I turn it back on and it, it like helps it like, like it'll scan the network again looking for it. So here's the Cricut Explorer Air 2 again. And I click connect. Normally it asks for a code to pair it. And so it's not connecting. I don't know why. It's possible that it's not close enough. So you do want to be within 10 to 15 feet, right? So if you're having an issue getting your Bluetooth to work, you'll want to make sure that your computer uh, or your device, whatever you're using for Bluetooth, is close enough to your Cricut. So right now there is definitely some distance between them. One of the other reasons I like to use the USB, right? And not leave it up to chance with Bluetooth. Um, so if you're having an issue, make sure you get them closer together. I can't do that on the video, but that's what you'd want to do if you're having an issue. And, you know, turn your machine on and off, all that sort of good stuff. So that's Bluetooth. Let's go back to Cricut Design Space, though. So because I did connect the USB cable, we should be able to see it right here in the menu, right? So if you don't, it says to make sure your machine is connected and powered on, um, powered on and back off and all that stuff. So, so let's go ahead and check to see if it's here. I do see it. I actually see both. <laughs> I see it connected by Bluetooth and by USB. And I'm, we're going to use USB today because it really will work better. So let's go ahead and click on USB and it'll give it a minute to make sure that it's there. And if it is properly connected, you'll see it show up here in this box, just a, like a confirmation and the continue button turns green so that you know you're good to go. That's like your like sort of visual signal that yes, things are working and it's all right. And this continue button is all lit up. So now we can continue on. Let's activate the Explorer. All right, so that's gonna add the Explorer to this Cricut ID. Make sure your email address is spelled correctly. This is a great time to double check, to triple check that you got it right. If you didn't get it right, click on not your email and you can fix it. If everything looks good, agree again to Cricut's terms of use and privacy policy and then click activate. All right, machine registration is successful and it updates it looking, you know, make sure it's got the latest software and setup is complete. Your Cricut Explorer family Machine is now set up and registered to your Cricut account. So we click on next. All right, now you're told about Cricut Access. Cricut Access is the subscription component to Cricut Design Space. Again, you do not need to have a subscription to use Cricut Design Space at all. I didn't have it for like the first year or year and a half at all. I, I, um, but you do get a free trial. So that comes with your machine, right? So you can get a free trial. It's good for 30 days. Um, I think Cricut Access is awesome. If you want to learn more about it, I'm going to talk more about it in lesson three. So I recommend that for now, you just hold off on your trial and learn more about your Cricut before you get your trial so that you can be making things with it, right? You're ready to go. Of course, if you know you're ready, it's fine. Sign up for your free trial now. But generally, I recommend you wait just a little bit until you're all ready to go so you can maximize your free trial and really determine if it's the right fit for you or not. So for now, we're gonna click maybe later. Remember, you do not need to have Cricut access to use Cricut Design Space or your Cricut. It is optional, okay? And then that brings us to our test cut. Let's, let's test the cut. To make sure everything is working correctly, we'll walk you through a cut. It's also a fun way to learn how your machine works. So you can choose one of these three, uh, sorry, six um, pictures, stickers, shapes, whatever. I am going to choose the sunflower and then the next thing would be to do to actually do the test is to click next. But right here, I'm going to stop for just a little bit and we're going to go over how to do what I just did on the Mac, but we're going to do it on Windows and iOS and Android. So everybody here can connect their device no matter what it is. Okay. So it won't take very long. It'll be faster um, for all this. So if you're on a Mac, 
great time to take a break. <laughs> if you're on Windows, stay here and then we'll do Windows and then we'll do iOS and then Android, but they're pretty quick. They're like under five minutes each. All right, so I'm gonna switch over to um, my video. My, my The videos are actually pre-recorded because it would be crazy if we attempted to set all of these up right here live today. We'd be here for a very long time because I'd have to be like signing in and connecting everything. We're not gonna mess with that. So I actually recorded them all last night on Christmas day, <laughs> Christmas evening, whatever. I always do that, this is just my ritual. And so that we have nice fresh installations of all of them. And so I'm gonna switch over and we're gonna do how to set it up on the, the Windows computer. Make sure I got everything. Someone's at my door, Greg will get that. <laughs> All right, setting up a Cricut Explorer on a, oops, let me back that up just a second there. There we go. All right, let's set up a Cricut Explorer Air 2 on a Windows computer. To begin, you'll want to go to a web browser. I'm in Google Chrome and type in cricut.com slash setup. And you just type that right in and press return on your keyboard and that brings you to this page. Glad you're here. Click on cutting machine and then choose your Cricut. We're gonna click on Cricut Explore family. Agree to the Cricut terms of use and then click on download now. If you're on Chrome in the lower left corner, you'll see a little arrow like this. Click that and choose open when done. And then it'll start installing for you if you do that. It's super easy to do and once it's done installing, it will open it up for you also. At the bottom, you'll see two options, product setup and sign in. Even if you have an account, I want you to do product setup. And then that brings you to this page. If you are brand new, you'll want to create an ID, but if you already have an account, click on sign in and put in your email address and password. But we're gonna do this as if we're new, so put in your email address Make sure it's correct, double, triple check it, and then put in your password. It needs to be at least eight characters, upper, lower case letters, numbers, and special symbols. And then your name, and double check again that everything is correct. And then agree to the Cricut terms of use and privacy policy and click create Cricut ID. And that will bring you over to Cricut Design Space uh, where you are gonna set up, you wanna click on Smart Cutting Machine. And then choose your Cricut. We want to click on Cricut Explore Family down there at the bottom. There we go, right there. Now it's just like I showed you, we're gonna prepare the workspace. So just click that arrow. We've already got it powered on. Click that arrow again. We're good to go. Now we need to connect to the computer. So uh, you again, they recommend USB. You can do Bluetooth. I have Bluetooth right now. And if you're having any issues finding it, it's not appearing, go to your Bluetooth settings on Windows. I just search for it usually, it's the easiest way to find it. Make sure Bluetooth is turned on. Click on Add Device and uh, click, look for your Cricut Air. It looks like this. Um, if you need to pair it, go ahead and click it. If you need a code, type in four zeros. That will be your pairing code, very nice and easy. Then go back to Cricut Design Space and click that green button. Now double check your email address and then click I agree to the terms of use and continue on. Um, and then setup is complete and click next. And that brings you to Cricut Access uh, where I recommend that you just choose maybe later for now. And then the same test cut page that you saw before. So we're now at the same, same spot. Now let's do um, setting it up on a iOS, I'm gonna use my iPad, but it'll be the same for the phone. Setting up a Cricut Explorer 2 on iPad and iPhone. So you'll want to go to Safari and type in cricut.com slash setup. There we go, and tap go. And that brings you to the setup page. You'll want to tap on cutting machine, not the heat press, but the cutting machine. And then choose your Cricut and we're setting up an Explore, so tap on Explore. And then at the bottom, tap I agree to Cricut Terms of Use and Privacy Policy. You can of course read them, and then tap Download Now. Once you do that, you'll be sent to the App Store to get the app, right? Make sure it says Cricut, Cricut Design Space, and then, then tap Get. 
Um, it doesn't usually take too long to download. If you already downloaded it before, it'll just ask you to re-download it again from the cloud so that you have the latest version and then tap open when it's all set. And then if you're asked if you want to use Bluetooth, say OK and also allow notifications. And then you'll get two buttons at the bottom, machine setup and sign in. Even if you already have an account, I want you to choose machine setup. All right. Yep, we want machine setup. Sorry, I have clearly a little thing there. <laughs> All right, so we want to create a new Cricut ID if you're brand new to Cricut. If you're not, click sign in and sign in with your email address and password. But we'll assume that you're new, so we're going to create a Cricut ID. Put in your email address. Be sure to double and triple check it that you're spelling it right and there's no mistakes. And then tap uh, the next one to put in your password. Your password needs to be at least eight characters long, upper and lowercase letters with a number and a special symbol. And by the way, you can make a note of your password in your Cricut handbook just so that you remember it. And I, I also recommend you click that eye icon so you can see what it is, just so that you can know what you put in. Put in your name and your first and last name too. Make sure also that they're spelled correctly so that you can be contacted and looked up and all that good stuff. Select your country. You can search with the bar at the top. I'm in the United States, so I just search for that and then I can select it. And then at the bottom, you need to agree to the Cricut Terms of Use before that button at the bottom becomes active. And then you click Create Cricut ID. And there we go. So now you're asked which machine you wanna set up. So choose your machine. Don't choose the Explore 3. We're doing the Cricut Explore Air 2. So that's the one at the bottom right here. So no, that, that one right there. So tap that one. And now we get connected. You plug in the Explore. You want to pair it blue, via Bluetooth. And if you are like, if you need to do that, you can, or, you know, like if you click this and it doesn't show anything, you need to pair it, right? So if it's just blank. So you'll want to go to your Bluetooth settings. To do that, you need to go back to your home screen on your iPad or iPhone and go to your settings. It looks like this gray icon with the gear icon on it. Open up that and then go to Bluetooth. On mine, it's in the top left right here. Make sure Bluetooth is turned on. There's a little green toggle at the upper right there. And then under other devices, look for the Cricut Explorer. It'll say Cricut Air 2 on it. If you and then tap it to pair it, if you're asked for a code, you can put it in the four zeros and then go back to Cricut Design Space and you should see it show up. So then you can select it by tapping on it. So I'm going to tap on it. There we go. <laughs> and it'll select it. And at the down at the bottom, it'll say, great, your Explorer is activated. Now you get the option to subscribe or do the free trial for Cricut Access. And it's, again, it's free for 30 days. Just like before, I recommend that you skip it for now and, and sign up for the free trial when you're ready to do it. Now on the Cricut Explorer, or like when we're, sorry, when we're on the, the desktop version, the skip button is not super obvious. You actually have to scroll up to the top to find it in the upper right corner there. So just scroll and you'll see it. Um, just so that you're not confused by that. And then you can click on skip. And then you come to the same screen to do let's test the cut, just like we saw on Mac and Windows. All right, now let's do Android. All right, how to set up a Cricut Explore Air 2 on Android. So you'll want to go to Google Chrome on your phone or tablet and then tap in cricut.com slash setup. And that brings you to this page. You want to select Cutting Machine and then Cricut Explorer Family. And then on this page, you can either, either click that View button over there on the right or just agree to the terms of, sur sur terms of use and download. And then you want to install it. Make sure it says that it's from Cricut, you know, verified and all that good stuff. So then make sure you're downloading the right one. But if you go through Cricut Setup, you should get the right one. And then when it's all good to go, tap on open. 
It doesn't usually take too long to download. There we go, tap open. And um, I'm gonna pause it for just one second here. When you get to Cricut uh, Design Space on your Android, it will rotate for you. So Cricut Design Space is currently only in portrait mode. So this like taller rather than wider version and you can't rotate it to get it into the wider version. So don't be confused by that when it when it rotates. So then you're like, oh, how do I unrotate that? This is the way it currently is. Hopefully that will change because I don't like it this way, just saying. <laughs> but it is in this mode, okay? All right, so at the bottom, you've got two buttons, machine setup and sign in. So you'll want to tap on machine setup, even if you already have a Cricut account. All right, and that brings you over to the Cricut uh, login screen. Now, if you are already have an account, go ahead and sign in with your email address and password. But if you are new and don't yet have a free account, click on create Cricut ID and type in your email address. Double check it that it's correct and then put in your password. Your password, it needs to be at least eight characters, have upper and lower case letters, numbers and uh, special symbols. And then put in your name and again, check, check. I can't tell you how many times people spell these things wrong. <laughs> Just make sure this is like, it makes a huge difference. And then um, choose your country. And then at the bottom there, you'll need to agree to Cricut's terms of use and privacy policy, and then click create Cricut ID. But again, if you already have an account, just sign into it. Now choose Cricut Explore Family, and you'll want to plug it in and power it on, just like we already did, and then tap continue to connect. So if you tap this and nothing happens, you see nothing here, right? This, this area here in the center is blank. That means that you need to pair your machine. You'll want to go to Bluetooth. So you go to your settings on your Android, tap on settings, and then go find Bluetooth, select Bluetooth, and make sure it's turned on, first of all. And then under available devices, look for Cricut Air 2, or you know, Cricut Air usually is what it's called. And then select that to connect it. And then click pair. If you're asked for a code, it's four zeros. Just tap that in. And then click pair. And now you can click connect. All right, and then here's Cricut Access. Again, I recommend you skip it for now until you're ready. And then that brings us to Let's Make a Sticker, which is the exact same thing for all of our, all Mac, Windows, iPad, iPhone, Android, phone, and tablet, all the same. I love it. All right, so we're up to let's test the cut and we're gonna just continue on from this point. So now everyone is covered and knows how to install it on their computer. If you have any more questions about connecting via Bluetooth or USB, let me know and I'm happy to answer. It's usually pretty straightforward. If you ever get stuck, I just recommend making sure everything is on, powering it down and powering it back on to like kind of make sure it's all good to go. That usually takes care of it all. All right. Let's test a cut. So back in design space, we're gonna make sure everything is working with a test cut. So I've selected the sunflower right here and I'm gonna click next. All right, we need to select our material. For this test cut, turn the dial to cardstock. So here's the smart dial. So I had you turn it to custom, but during the tutorial, they want you to use cardstock. So um, I'm going to move this over just a little bit more so you can see this just right here. So, you know, it turns just like this and cardstock is, I need to get a little closer. It's right down here in the lower corner. So we're going to turn it so that this little dot here actually is pointing at it. There we go. So let me actually zoom in a little bit more so you can see that really well. You see that better? There we go. So this little dot here is pointing the cardstock. Now you might be wondering, well, okay, these so these are my settings. So it used to be that this is these were the settings back when it first came out, and you could just set things on you know by using this dial. We don't use this anymore. <laughs> I will after, when we're all done, I'll have you switch it back to custom and you're gonna leave it there, okay? 
but for the tutorial, because this is an older machine, it still has you use this, the smart dial. Just know that after today, you want to going to want to keep it on custom. All of my tutorials assume you have it on custom. Okay. So, because once you have it on custom, you can access all of the material settings and create custom material settings and all that awesome stuff. Okay. But for now, we're going to put it onto cardstock right here. And if you look at design space, you can see that it knows that we did it. It switched to the next screen for us, right? It just did it automatically, right? So here's the diagram of it and I'm going to turn it off. But when I turn it back on, it knows I did it and it, it goes to the next screen. So you're not confused by that. Okay. All right. Prepare for cut. Place a small piece of cardstock on the top left corner of your mat. Let's do that together. So let's move this back over here. And here is our stuff. So here is our mat. This is a machine mat. Let's make a little space here. I don't make it all messy. All right. That's good. Okay. So this is your machine mat. This is a blue light grip machine mat. It's the one that comes with the Cricut Explorer Air 2. It has a plastic cover on it to protect it. You want to remove this. Okay. So take off this plastic cover, save this plastic cover. You're always going to put this cover back on when you're done using it to keep your mat clean. Okay. Um, you can, I just did a, a, a tip video where I recommend that you actually write on the front of your, your um, mat cover. Then you always know where the front is um, because the others, they're, they are a little bit different and it also helps you not lose it if it's got writing on it. You can watch that video if you want. It's my Cricut, my Cricut TikTok hacks video. Okay. So here is our, let's straighten up my mat here. Here is our light grip machine mat. So in your in your box, you got three pieces of cardstock. This blue piece, this black piece, and this white piece. You can use any of these that you want to. We will use these again for lesson three. So I recommend you just pick one and use it. Um, I'll, I will use this blue piece. Well, no, I'm going to use the black piece. It'll be easier to see on a mat. Okay. Just save the other two for lesson two, unless you want to go out and get some more cardstock. All right. So so I'm just looking at the, the picture, just making sure that I'm doing the way they want me to. All right. So we want to put our cardstock in that upper left corner. Um, whenever you're by default, your Cricut will cut, um, will put whatever you want to cut up here up in this corner, right? You can move it around and I'll show you that in lesson three. But for right now, you just want to put it in the upper left corner and it goes right up. Let me actually change my, so we can see nice and close. So you put your cardstock right up here where it meets right there, just like this. And this is sticky right? And you want to press it down with your fingers like this. It's important that your uh, cardstock be well adhered to your mat for the best cut. Okay. Tomorrow in lesson two, we'll talk about ways that you can do that. You know, not just using your fingers too. All right. So we have our cardstock on the mat back in Cricut design space. Um, we can go ahead and click the next arrow. Prepare for cut. Uh, confirm that the blade is set in place in clamp B. All right, so let's go back to our Cricut. Let's open it up. Remember, it's the button right here. We'll keep this nice big view. All right, so again, this is clamp A and this is clamp B. Your blade should be already be in clamp B. It comes that way. So it's in there. It looks good to go to me. There we go. All right, so um, we're good. Let's go to the next screen in design space. Push the mat up under the guides toward the rollers. So it needs to go under these guides that you see here and it needs to be pressed against the rollers. Okay. I think I, when I first, when I got my very first Cricut Explorer Air 2, I think I just put my mat in and then I just like, 
you know, press the button to have it load and nothing happens. I didn't understand that I really had to press against it. It has to like catch it and pull it. Okay, so. So let's back it up just a little bit so you can see both guides there. There we go. All right, so these are the little guides that you want to make sure that your mat goes under right here and here. So you want to put your mat in so that your cardstock is in the, you know, the right orientation. It's going in this upper left corner, right? And then it's going to go under the guides, just like that. See how they're under the guides? And then we're going to press it up against the rollers. So. See, I'm kind of pressing it. You don't have to press really hard, but you want to make sure that it's up against them, okay? And Design Space says our next step is to press the flashing load and unload button on the machine. So you can see it's flashing. It's right here. This is telling us that we're ready to load. So I like to keep a hold of the bottom of my mat when I load my machine. And just kind of, I'm just kind of pressing against it lightly to make sure it's not moving out of position. I recommend, like, what would be better is to have your hand down here at the middle of the bottom, but, you know, I'm in an awkward position right now. So I'll just hold it right here. Can you see that right here? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and press the flashing button, and it'll load in. That's it. All right, and then Cricut Design Space says, when you're ready to start the cut, press the flashing go button. So you'll notice that now the load button is, you know, it's still lit, but it's not flashing anymore. Now the flashing button is this middle button. Uh, this has a little symbol. It's got a C with little antlers for like the Cricut logo. It's their older logo. They don't really use that one anymore. I always just say press the flashing button in my tutorials so that you're not confused by that because it actually looks a little different on different machines. So when we're ready, we're gonna press this button. It's going to load the mat into the Cricut and cut it, and you'll be able to watch it. It always does that little test right there. And now it's gonna cut it. Let's see if I can get a nice close in view of that. There it is. I think it's so awesome how it does this. You can see the mat is moving back and forth and the rollers are moving, uh, is moving that blade assembly side to side. And so it's able to do exactly what you told it to do in the software. I always geek out every time I watch this. It's whatever, it just works for me. <laughs> so it's doing it exactly precisely so much better than we could do with a craft knife for ourselves. And that, um, that little blade is dragging across the paper to cut it. And it, it is dragging, and that's why it's important that our mat be sticky. If it's not sticky, our paper or whatever's on our mat could slide around. And um, So if ever you're having an issue cutting, make sure your mat is sticky. It's very important. And I think it's doing the outside of the sunflower now. And you'll notice the B clamp is, you know, pressing down when it's cutting and then it lifts up when it's done. And then it does that. And when it's all done, Cricut Design Space lets you know that it's finished. But honestly, most of the time you will know because your Cricut stopped cutting. <laughs> and also, let's me back up here a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Also, the load and unload button flashes right here, and then you know it, where you're good to remove it. And you press this, and it spits out your, your mat. And here it is, all cut. You see that lovely sunflower right there? Let me give you a closer view of that. Look at that, see? Isn't that beautiful? So precisely cut, it looks amazing. All right, so, um, Design Space says, test complete, nice work. To confirm a clean cut, you can peel your decal from the liner. This is paper, it's not vinyl, but it doesn't matter because you can still tell, right? Now I'm actually gonna leave this on our mat because tomorrow when we talk about 
tools and materials. We're going to, um, I'm going to tell you how you could get this off the mat. Um, if you need to get it off the mat now, I guess maybe I could remove it now. Maybe I'll, I will, I'm trying to think. Usually I keep it on here because we take it off together uh, because you can use a tool to do it, but it's not vinyl. So, so the, to remove it from your mat, if you just want to put it away, you take your mat and you flip it over onto your surface like this, right? So rather than peel it off like this, if you just take it off like this, it actually has a tendency to tear or the paper can get like stuck and it's kind of a mess. <laughs> also, it, uh, the paper will curl as you do that. So you don't take it off that way. You actually just want to flip your mat over like this and bend the mat away from your, your project. So you see as I'm bending it away, it's actually just coming off on its own. So it is so much better to remove your material this way. This is a, a beginner issue I've noticed is how to get things off the mat. So there it is. And then we can take the sunflower itself off too. There we go. And we're gonna leave this on the mat and then I'll, I'll explain to you what to do about all the stuff that's left on your mat tomorrow. In the meantime, get your plastic cover right now and put it back on, okay? You can match up. I like to hang up my mat, so you just match up the top there to the little hole, and then you just gotta cover it all up and put it back to keep it nice and safe. I actually like to keep my mats right under my Cricut. There's like a little, like a little shelf there, see? Like it kind of sits up a little bit. Come on, close for me. Let me open up this one. There's a little space under your Cricut. I, this is basic, this is where I always keep my mats. Just kind of tuck them under here for now. And then here is our lovely sunflower. You can take out these little bits here. If it didn't cut through all the way, chances are it wasn't really stuck down to your mat well. Okay, so make sure that you've stuck it down to your mat really well. Press it down well with your fingers. If you have used your Cricut before, and it seems like your mat is dirty. It might not be sticky enough, so you might need to clean it or get a new mat. I consider a mat to be consumable. We'll talk more about that tomorrow too. But here is our finished sunflower. Doesn't that look beautiful? Like, look at those gorgeous clean cuts. It's lovely. All right, we did it. <laughs> so I will do a little wrap up and then we'll do questions, okay? And I'm making sure I've got everything. All right, Let's straighten everything up before I do my little, little, little finish up thing. All right, so if you have any more questions about how to set up your Cricut Explore Air 2, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in our awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters, where you can get help and guidance from over a million, no, not a million, will be a million soon, half a million Cricut crafters just like you. Now, if you also want to learn about how to set up your Cricut Joy, Explore 3, Original Maker, or Cricut Maker 3, I have lessons on those cutting machines too. Get links to those classes at cricutkickoff.com. Tomorrow, I'll be back for lesson two, and I'll show you all of the necessary materials and supplies that you can use for your Cricut Explore. Lots of cool things, but I'm going to help you focus on what you actually need so you're not overwhelmed. So until next time in our next class, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.